It's a hot afternoon here in sunny Florida, and I am here to do a performance review on the 450 HTC from Galleon. This boat has a really sporty profile, and I'm really looking forward to putting her through her paces. I'm Captain Shelley for Boat Test. Let's get started. Galleon 450 HTC was designed for boaters looking to transition from day boats to a cruiser, yet don't want to abandon all the fun of a small boat. I think of this vessel as more of an all-purpose yacht, because you have all the same outdoor fun as a day boat, but if it starts raining or gets chilly, everyone can escape indoors. She's a boat that can turn into a floating summer cottage, an entertainment platform for both kids and adults, or an adventure cruiser to go harbor hopping or out to a nearby island. The Galleon 450 HTC has a length overall of 45 feet 9 inches, a beam of 13 feet 8 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 3 inches. With the twin Volvo Penta 480 horsepower D6 diesels run up to 3700 RPM, our speed topped out at 27.2 knots. The best cruise was at 2750 RPM and 18.3 knots. It was at that speed that the 25.5 gallons per hour fuel burn translated into 0.7 nautical miles per gallon. That gives the 450 a range of 290 nautical miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve. The Galleon 450 HTC is fun to drive. She gets up on plane quickly and at speeds, we can take sharp turns and she'll barely bleed off speed. So if you just give a little bit extra on the throttle, you'll make it through those turns just fine. Our conditions today weren't very sporty, but the zip wake system that is installed is a great feature. So while we were crossing our own wake, I barely noticed. At the helm, we have dual 12 inch Raymarine screens. Now let's focus in on these multifunction displays. These screens are one of the major things that make piloting this boat easy and fun. First, you're never getting lost. Second, you can instantly tell where the shallows are and where your destination is. Third, these screens are touchscreen and intuitive. The advantage of two screens is that you have redundancy. You can have charts on one and radar on the other, or you can mount cameras on your stern that will display here, aiding in docking, or any other number of things. Down below, I have the Raymarine Autopilot, our bow and stern thrusters. Let's step again to talk about close quarters maneuvering. The dual digital throttle controls paired with the optional bow and stern thrusters make docking this boat so easy. When you arrive down the marina fairway in front of your slip, you just push one stick to port and the other to starboard, and you easily spin the boat to line up with your slip. If the current or wind pushes the boat to one side, just touch both thrusters to keep the boat on track. It's all very intuitive. Also, the thrusters eliminate the need for expensive pod drives and a joystick. I have a steering wheel on a fixed base, digital throttle controls, Volvo Penta ignition start stops, and that zip wake controller. The zip wake interceptors take the place of trim tabs and deploy completely in 1.5 seconds, five times faster than tabs. Galleon has fitted them because they automatically trim the boat and reduce pitching and roll, which makes running this boat much easier on the owner-operator. The interceptors automatically move up and down independently as required on each side of the stern. They also greatly reduce drag, meaning the boat can go faster and use less fuel. One thing to note at the helm is this large mullion creates a little bit of a blind spot. You can see out this window, but if you really need extra visibility, you just open this door. I like that they've done a transparent window to the electrical panel. It also lights up when you open it. I do wish they would have come up with a way to keep this up so I didn't have to hold it. Behind this cabinet door on the starboard side is your generator start stop. Now let's go down into the engine compartment and check out that generator. Let's take a look at the engine compartment accessed from a hatch in the aft deck. The whole compartment has been finished, so there is no exposed fiberglass, and there's sound dampening and fire suppression material above the whole space. 
The main focal point is the Volvo Penta D6 480 horsepower diesels with easy to access sea strainers and fuel filters. The engines have their oil dipsticks inboard so you can easily check both. Also, the raw water strainers are high with transparent tops for quick checking. Looking forward, you can see the Victron battery management systems, inverter, and breaker panels. On either side of the engines are fuel tanks with fuel filters attached directly to the tanks. The freshwater tank and the twin fuel tanks are made out of stainless steel, something that not all cruisers in class have. To starboard is the receptacle for the shore power cords coming from the deck, and behind that, the Fisher Panda generator produces 12 kilowatts. Along the center line is the fire suppression system with the house battery banks on both sides. Aft of those are the accessible steering gears and to port is the hot water heater and air conditioning chiller. The chiller system produces 67,000 BTUs. When I first took the helm, I was surprised how easy this boat was to handle and I think anyone moving up in boat size should consider the 450 HTC. But this is really only half the story. Be sure to see my other video on the features of this boat and I compare them to the layout of the 440 Fly, another mid-size yacht in the Galleon lineup. During our testing today of the 450 HTC, the boat ran great, which we've come to expect from Galleon. This has been my full performance review of the Galleon 450 HTC. For Boat Test, I'm Captain Shelley.